down 1.7 percent here, a loss of 37 points or so. Apple shares are just getting hammered this morning. <laughs> and a half percent generally across these markets because we're now down 43 percent it was the worst day on wall street since the crash of 1987. monday december 19th 2022 Monaco 64 home of alternative economics and contrarian views today we're going to look at how the philly fed one of the regional uh, banks of the federal reserve system has admitted that there was basically almost no job growth in the second quarter of this year. Uh, before I start, though, and we look deeper into that, I uh, just wanted to uh, ask you what do you think of the new introduction to the video. And I have to thank one of the viewers from Australia for sending me that. Uh, but uh, it's still uh, early days. You need to let me know if you like it or not. Uh, and uh, if you like it, I'll, I'll keep it like this. The other thing I would say, uh, and it's to do with the World Cup, the, the football World Cup. Americans, of course, call it soccer. Yeah, congratulations to the Argentinian uh, team. Uh, they played very well. And one thing I would, would say is that there won't be a, a revolution or a collapse of the government in Argentina in the next few weeks. So that's what I think about the World Cup, the older I get. And uh, yes, Argentina has 88% uh, official inflation in the last 12 months. So that's going to help the uh, political class a little bit to uh, keep power for a little longer because people are celebrating. So we all know that uh, according to the Keynesians, and, and they uh, developed all, all these uh, statistics, uh, equations, GDP equation. Um, yeah, they've been doing it for, for decades because they believe that uh, governments need to be involved in the economy and like uh, help the economy when there's a recession. And yes, uh, Keynes might, might have thought that... Uh, it wouldn't be abused as it is now that uh, after recession, the government would pay down the debt and, and get get off the, the back of the private economy. But I think, uh, yeah, he, he would have been naive to think that. And, and I'm not sure anyone ever asked him that. But be as it may, uh, we're, we've always been told by these economists that two consecutive quarters of negative GDP, like we had in the US, as you can see in Q1 and Q2 this year, uh, constituted a recession. But we were told by the Fed and politicians, uh, the Biden administration, that there was no recession because jobs growth uh, was so high, the economy was doing well. And uh, yes, <laughs> they, they, they were like, uh, I guess, uh, rooting uh, for the economy because they had a, a, an election to contest uh, in November. But uh, it's interesting that uh, the Philadelphia Fed, as I said, one of the regional private banks owned by the, the banks in the Philadelphia Fed region, they've just come out, and this is not me, <laughs> December 13th, early benchmark revisions of state State Payroll Employment Research Department. So it says, early benchmark uh, for all 50 states in the District of Columbia. I won't read the whole thing. I'm going to put a link to this below in the description and you can go through it. But uh, the important part is here uh, in the third paragraph. Uh, in the aggregate, 10,500 net new jobs were added during the period rather than the 1,121,500 jobs estimated by the sum of the states. The U.S. CES estimated net growth of 1,047,000 jobs for the, pe for the period. So why the discrepancy? Well, I've always told you, and you might remember, uh, that uh, non-farm payroll uh, that's published uh, by the BLS is a survey <laughs> and they don't go around asking all the businesses in the country 
I think people caught on to this because of uh, mishtalk.com. Uh, that's uh, yeah, Mish Global Economics and Global Politics, and he covered this. Uh, he's got a, a good uh, article on it. I think he published it on the 16th, on the same day. The Philadelphia Fed just revised jobs lower by 1.2 million for Q2, and he says, "Hello, <laughs> jobs are too strong for recession advocates. We have major revisions, and more more are likely coming." So why the, the, the huge discrepancy? Well, Mish talks about it here. He says, whereas QCEW data cover more than 95% of all employers, the CS sample represents just 6% of the QCEW total. So as I said, it's just a survey. So a 95% sample is a lot better than a 6% sample. And that's why there's such a big discrepancy and he goes on to say, Mish, that we're going to have to wait until February 2024, so another 14 months, to get the BLS revisions. So, yes, I think, as I've said a few times uh, lately, because there's talk now that there will be a recession next year. I've said that it's going to be a double dip recession because there was one earlier this year. And unfortunately... If you look at countries like uh, France in the 1790s, uh, Germany in the early 1920s, Venezuela more recently in Zimbabwe, and, and all the countries that have had uh, currency collapses, hyperinflation, or very high inflation, uh, their economies weren't doing well. That's the uh, other fallacy, in my opinion, of the mainstream economists and even people in the alternative. They, they think that uh, a slowdown in a recession uh, is going to bring uh, prices down, that the inflation is going to go down. But uh, unfortunately, I, I think uh, we are in the path to a hyperinflation. And, and we can see here, uh, for example, in the UK, it's just come out that uh, they're going to extend uh, help for businesses, the energy package, until early till early next year. It was supposed, no, early 2024, so, sorry, was supposed to be just for, for early 2023. So that's going to be more deficit spending, more, more inflation, because we know inflation is when the government spends more than it takes in and the central bank obliges. And in the U.S., the same thing is happening, aside from all the billions being sent to that country uh, in Eastern Europe, we've got the administration bailing out uh, pension funds, as we, we've seen here a, a week ago, Biden releasing nearly $36 billion to aid uh, pensions of union workers. And, and this, people have said, could, could add up to as much as uh, $90 billion. And here in the UK, again, we are bailing out the Bank of England now, UK Treasury, as you can see here, to transfer 11 billion pounds to BOE to cover QE losses. Well, that's coming from us, the taxpayer, through inflation and through taxation. And, and more recently, a mainstream publication here, The Telegraph, uh, Neil Record says, we made an appalling mistake, so the Bank of England needs 188 billion bailout. It's not going to stop, people. And... Uh, that's the worst combination, uh, depression or really deep recession, uh, bailouts, money printing, and, and also the fact that the Fed probably raised rates too much because they thought the economy was a lot better, but it turns out it wasn't. It's a big mess. And I'm going to reference uh, two books that I think are very uh, important to read if you want to understand currency collapse and what happens and the symptoms. One is Fiat Money Inflation in France by Andrew Dixon White. And he says right in the beginning, uh, chapter one, early in the year 1789, the French nation found itself in deep financial embarrassment. There was a heavy debt and a serious deficit. The vast reforms of that period, though a lasting blessing politically, were a temporary evil financially. There was a general want of confidence in business circles. 
Capital had shown its proverbial timidity by retiring out of sight as far as possible. Throughout the land, there was stagnation. Statesmen like measures, careful watching and wise management would doubtless have ere long led to a return of confidence, a reappearance of money and a resumption of business. But <laughs> these involved patience and self-denial and thus far in human history, these are the rarest products of political wisdom. Few nations have ever been able to exercise these virtues and France was not, not then one of these few. So yeah, the self-denial, not bailing out pension funds, not bailing out the Bank of England, not bailing out everyone, like uh, energy consumers, business consumers. Yes, they're uh, trying to uh, demonize the nurses that are striking, the rail workers that are striking, but I think it's just a uh, negotiation and, and they will get their, their pay rises. And I don't blame them for, for wanting pay rises because the government has debased the currency <laughs> and uh, uh, they can't live anymore on those uh, wages. And the same thing happened uh, in Germany, as I said, and this is the book uh, I, I've referenced uh, uh, the part of the economy from When Money Dies uh, by Adam Ferguson, another book I, I think you should read. Um, And it says here on page 13, war had, had been bad enough for the German economy. The armistice first and then the peace terms shook it to the foundations. So you can see uh, you got high inflation and then eventually hyperinflation. And uh, yes, I've said that we're going to have hyperinflation. Is it going to be like Germany, 1 million percent inflation? No, but it, it could be just as bad as Argentina, 88 percent. And the, the currency will become virtually worthless, in my opinion. And these uh, periods happen when the economy wasn't doing well. It's not because of a booming economy. A booming economy means jobs are being created. People are earning uh, good money. And there's enough supply of goods. Yes. So with that, let's uh, quickly look at where the markets are this morning. Oh, before I start uh, and look at the markets, just want to say I didn't do a live stream last night and I won't do uh, another one on Sunday because it's Christmas Day. We're going to actually spend Christmas with family and friends at a friend's house. So we're going to be there, stay there overnight. So unfortunately... It's difficult to do a live stream when everyone's celebrating and having a few drinks. But uh, I might do a live stream impromptu, not, not necessarily on a Sunday in the coming couple of weeks. We'll see. But I will definitely restart it next, next year. Don't worry. Sunday live stream is not going away. So it's 8.34 a.m. London time. We've got spot gold at uh, $17.96. It's up about three bucks. The high's been 99. The low's been 90. Silver's up 15 cents at 23.36. Uh, the high's been 42. The low uh, 23.01. Stock market. Yeah, the Dow future is up a third of a percent. NASDAQ is up 0.4. S&P future is up a third. Uh, FTSE is up a third as well, so stock market doing a little better. The currencies are stronger versus the dollar here, as I see. Uh, the pound is up half a percent, uh, just over 122.00. Uh, the euro is up half a percent at 106.40. The dollar is down uh, two-thirds of a percent versus the yen at uh, 135.93. And the dollar uh, is unchanged versus the U1 at 697.70. Let's check uh, the ruble. I think the dollar is, has been strengthening against the ruble. Uh, dollar right now is at uh, 65.85 versus the ruble. So ruble weakening here a little bit in the last week or so. To the other currencies, Aussie dollar up half a percent, 67.20. A dollar down a third versus the loonie, 136.48. And the ki Kiwi dollar is up a quarter of a percent, 63.93. Uh, to the general commodities, we got platinum 
uh, trading at 1002 that's up uh, about $9 spot platinum price. Uh, we've got WTI crude down a third at 74.17. Brent is down a quarter at 79.09. High grade copper is up almost 1% at 379.75. US NAT gas is down 5% at 604. Let's check the uh, Dutch. Uh, Dutch is at 110. To finish off, we're going to check the uh, the bond market, uh, the 10-year yield, U.S. 10-year yield. Let's have a look. Is at uh, 351. That's up about three basis points. The two years at uh, 417. And that's unchanged. And uh, let's check the U.K. government bond market. Uh, we've got the 30-year uh, gilt up another eight basis points at 375, and the 10 year is creeping up as well at 340. So yeah, we've rebounded fairly significantly uh, in terms of yields in the UK. I, I think it's because the market is starting to sniff this uh, constant bailout and the fact that the government and, and, and the Treasury is going to have to keep bailing out, not just the whole... <laughs> Uh, economy which is really nonsensical because the money comes from the economy and and also the Bank of England uh, who help bail out the banking system in 08 and help bail out again the banking system in 2020 and uh, now <laughs> and it did did so by creating money out of thin air and they they took that money or the, those reserves to buy uh, guilt and uh, yeah and the money went to the banks that's how it's done but it not only kept the banks going it kept the real estate market going and uh, as you can see the 08 crisis has never ended and unfortunately I think it's gonna uh, end in the currency crisis for everyone really not not just uh, here in the UK so there you go with that I wish you a, a great day and a great start to the, to your week Take care. Bye.